One of the greatest names in radio comedy was, of course, Fred Allen. The famous Benny Allen feud went on for years, though Fred and I were close friends. Fred had a sharp wit and a sense of satire that has never been surpassed. We exchanged many visits on radio, Fred to my show and I to his. His ability to ad-lib was phenomenal. And one night, after a particularly hilarious Fred Allen ad-lib, I returned this line, which has been quoted time and time again. Hmm, you wouldn't have said that if my writers were here. Fred's famous Allen's Alley is as fresh today as it was then. The senator's home. I'll knock and see what happens. Somebody, I say, somebody knock. Yes, I knock. Claghorn's the name. Senator Claghorn, that is. I know you're from the South. When I'm in New York, I'll never go to the Yankee Stadium. Now, wait a minute. See the Giants unless the South Pole's pitching. Well, look, I refuse to watch the Dodgers unless Dixie Walker's playing. Now, wait a minute. Let Stop me... interrupting. Where's your manners? Manners, I have manners. Uh, try listening. You might learn something. Listen, all I'll ever learn. Your tongue's wagging like a blind dog's tail in a meat market. <laughs> You're winded, hey? <laughs> Just sucking in some air, son. <laughs> well, leave a little. I'm breathing, too, you know. Uh, tell me, Senator, what is Washington doing about coal prevention? The Senate, I say, the Senate reconvened just in time. Yeah? I was glad to see Senator Aiken back. Ah! Uh, Aiken back, that's a joke. Son. I know it's a joke. That was a funny fact. I, I was, I was, that was a green pot streaker. Listen, you don't know what it is. I keep stuff. tossing them and you just sidestep them. Well, look at them. Now, wait. Say, you're a regular sand sack. Sack, that is. Now, you wait. Tell me, uh, cool off now just a second. Do you have a favorite cure for a cold? I caught a cold last week. Yeah. I'd like to ruin my filibuster. Ruin your filibuster? <laughs> what, what did you do? I took an old southern remedy, son. I drank down two buckets of hot mint julep. You drank two buckets of hot mint juleps and you still held the floor? Held the floor? Son, I couldn't get up off it. <laughs> Well, I wonder how Titus Moody is doing this evening. Howdy, bub. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, Mr. Moody, you look a little tired. I know. I was up all night. Couldn't get a wink. You didn't sleep a wink? No, no, it wasn't that. Somebody stole my tiddly. Uh... <laughs> well, look. well, Mr. Moody, uh, tell me, has this cold epidemic hit your farm? My wife had a nasty cold. Did you call the doctor? Yeah. Go down quick. Give her sulfur and molasses. Put in too much sulfur. Well, how can you tell he gave her too much sulfur? When my wife sits in the dark, she glows. <laughs> well, are you doing anything about it? Why, Senator Claghorn, a foreigner next door. <laughs> he sent me over a bucket of hot mint julep. For your wife? No, no, for me. Tonight I'm getting lit up to keep her company. Come on, Doctor. Titus is going to get lit up on his weekend. Well, let's see what a knock here will start. No. Ah, oh, Mrs. Nussbaum. You're expecting maybe two la lu la lu la banquet. No. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Ann, have you had any colds in your house? My husband, Pierre, is sick. Oh, really? They are maybe sending him to a clinic. The Meyer brothers. Oh, the Meyer brothers. <laughs> well, didn't Pierre try any cold remedies? Every day is a new remedy. First, he is bringing home fruit to drinking fruit juices. What kind? Oranges, grapefruits, tambourines. <laughs> well, how long did he drink the fruit juices? One day. Mm -hmm. Then Pierre is opening up the window and throwing out the fruit. Oh, he had another remedy? Vitamins from vegetables. Oh, good. good. <laughs> He's bringing home carrots, sprinkler beans, and rutabagos. <laughs> how long did he try vitamins? One day. One day again. Pierre is opening up the window and throwing out the wedges of He had yet another remedy? Absolute rest. Oh. You're staying in bed. Uh-huh. I am bringing meals. I'm bringing pills. I'm bringing hot water bottles. Well, how long did this last? One day. And then? I am opening up the window and throwing out Pierre. <laughs> Thank you.
Radio contributed many words and phrases to our vocabulary. When you said a person was in, you had Jack Pearl and his famous character in mind. Did you know that Jimmy Durante has been looking all over this theater of you with a gun? What do you mean? He's looking for me with a revolver? <laughs> what? I say he's looking for me with a revolver. <laughs> With a revolver, yeah. Why, why he's looking for me, why? Well, he said that you called him a dirty name. I called him a dirty name? He said that you swore at him. Oh, what a liar! Yeah, what wait, 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 wait. Now, now, don't get excited. You'll get high blood pressure. No, not me. I'm anemic. Oh, no. Sure. <laughs> I give you my solemn word, I never called him a dirty name, and I never swore. Well, then how did it happen? Here's how that comes out, just like it was. All right. Uh, what day is this today? Today? Yeah. Today is Sunday. Sunday. That was four days back. Mm -hmm. That was Wetnish days. Yeah. You see, I'm going out <laughs> with, with my... Wait a minute. What day did you say? Wetnish days. No, I no. was going... You mean Wednesday. Yeah, in the center of the week, like. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday, named after the god Woden. No. <laughs> Wednesday is named after Tuesday. Oh, well, sure. uh, <laughs> you see, Wednesday is I was yeah. going in the country with my car. I see. Well, as well, wait, I wait, came wait, driving... Wait a minute. Tell me, uh, what, what time of the day was this? Oh, this was maybe 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock a.m. or p.m.? Uh, so I'm going... To... <laughs> what was that? What? I said, was it, was it 9 o'clock a.m. or p.m.? <laughs> So I'm going out in my... Why don't you answer my question? Was it 9 o'clock a.m. or p.m.? No, no, no. That's not nice. What's not nice? Now, I don't like that. Now, you hear that? Now, what are you say... talking about? Now, I know what that is. Now, oh, don't oh, say you that. You do. <laughs> so I'm going out All right, all right. Wait a minute. Now, I don't like... You know what it is? Yeah. Well, what is it? About the farmer's daughter. No. I don't like... Jack Pearl contributed Vajudere Charlie to our language. Jimmy Durante added, I got a million of them. While Joe Penner offered, you nasty man, don't ever do that, and want to buy a duck? I guess we all used Molly's famous, taint funny, McGee. What are you reading, dearie? Wimple's bird book. <laughs> he left it here last night, and you never read such a miss of mass information in your life. It's awful. Well, if it's that bad, why do you read it? It's so garbled, it, it fascinates me. <laughs> this book has got more wrong answers than a nervous housewife on Take It or Leave It. <laughs> Look at the title, even. American Birds and Their Habits. They can't even spell habits, you see? Where? There. Oh, that word isn't habits, dearie. It's habitats. Oh. Well, what I want to know is what their habits are. Who cares where they have their habits at? <laughs> Any bird lover who reads this would throw eggs at the publisher. <laughs> Say, when did you become such a bird lover, lover? <laughs> Ever since the first time I had quail with wild rice. <laughs> What particular statement in that book are you quarreling with? Well, listen to what it says about the feeding habitats of the pelican. All right. It says the pelican feeds occasionally on other things besides fish, but it definitely prefers marine life. Now, that is ridiculous. Why is it? There ain't a pelican living that could get in the marines. <laughs> Why? They even turned me down twice. Dearie, that isn't what that means. Huh? <clears throat> besides, I think you're being too critical. After all, you're not much of an expert on bird life. Who ain't? You ain't. Huh? I mean, you aren't. <laughs> oh, 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 the heck I aren't. <laughs> Who wasn't worked his way through high school raising baby chicks and even invented a slot machine that would dispense them two for a quarter? <laughs> And who was it that a chewing gum took his idea and beat him to the patent office? What chewing gum? Chicklets. <laughs> That's why I say these people are right these... Come in. Oh, it's Wallace Wimple. Hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> we were just reading your bird book, Mr. Wimple. Hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I'm glad to know where I left it. <laughs> I'm afraid I was rather upset when I left here last night. Yeah, we, we noticed that, Wimp. <laughs> Why? Did I do something? Well, we had the radio turned on to a political rap. Yeah, oh, I remember yeah. now. A deep voice snarled, Wallace is going to get the beating of his life. And I went right out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> hey, how are you getting along these days with her, Wimp? You mean, sweetie face? <laughs> My big old wife. <laughs> yes. Oh, about as usual. We had a little tiff yesterday, and believe me, Sweetie Face puts up a tough tiff. <laughs> what 
was it about, Wimp? Oh, it was nothing, really. <laughs> no? She came back from downtown with a new hairdo and asked me how I liked it. Then? <laughs> and I told her. <laughs> Frankly, sweetie face, I said, it looks like an explosion in an Excelsior factory. Oh. I said, or a crew haircut with mutiny on the poop deck. <laughs> I don't blame them for dyeing your hair, I said, but they waited too long to embalm it. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. And then out loud, I said... It... <laughs> I said, it looks simply beautiful, dear. <laughs> My gosh, how could she object to that? <laughs> oh, she knows me so well. <laughs> She ignored the compliments on my lips and tried to slap the expression off my face. <laughs> when I ducked, she... Oh, speaking of ducks, did you enjoy reading my bird book? Yeah. <laughs> no. What? Confidentially, Wimp, this book is fuller of tripe than the inside of a cow. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. McGee. This is the finest bird book there is. <laughs> this is the authority on birds. It tells about the dodo bird disappearing, the migratory habits of the snow goose, yeah. how the passenger pigeon became extinct. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was that again? You mean about the passenger pigeon? Yeah, that. Well, it says on page 49, and I quote, mm -hmm. the passenger pigeon, which once swarmed over the North American continent by the millions, has become completely extinct. Uh -huh. The last known passenger pigeon died in the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. Exactly. That's just what I mean. That is a falsehood. What do you mean, McGee? I mean, I saw a passenger pigeon today. I've seen one every day for weeks. Oh, my goodness, Mr. McGee. If what you say is true... And it is. If you actually saw a real live passenger pigeon, why, why, any zoo in the country would pay thousands for one. You mean thousands of money? Thousands of dollars for one pigeon, Mr. Wimple? Are you uh, sure it was a passenger pigeon, McGee? Why, sure I'm sure it was a passenger pigeon. Hey, if there were that kind of dough, I could trap that thing and sell it for... Oh, my gosh. Where's my hammer? Where's my tools? I gotta make a trap. Where's my screwdriver? I'll I don't trap... know, Mr. McGee. I'm just a guest here. Oh, I know. I left it right here in the hall closet. No, don't open that door, McGee. <laughs> Admiral, will you come over here and help me put this sign on the door? Why, sure, Lom. Just hold this nail in place while I whack it with a hammer. For quiet, homespun humor with a country flavor, I think you have to turn to Lum and Abner as the foremost example. In fact, I can't think of anything on television today that has captured this particular kind of format. The comedy was comfortable and funny. Well, I suppose you hold a nail in place while I whack it with a hammer. You think I'm crazy? The trouble here is we're suffering from an oversupply of whackers. Have you ever seen me hit anybody on the thumb with a hammer? Yes. Last summer when Opie Cates helped you put up the screens. Oh, that was just a little tap. Tap? You smacked that thumb so flat it looked like he's carrying around a pancake flipper. Why, he didn't even holler. He let out such a beller, all the fellers at the sawmill knocked off for lunch. <laughs> you stop exaggerating and hold that nail? Granny. Lom, you, you couldn't hit that nail no matter if your whole life depended on Oh, now, be on. quiet. Huh? Just this hold... is my page-flipping finger here, Lom. Be Just careful. hold the nail in place. Okay, here goes. How was that? Not bad. Just aim it two more feet to the left, and I think you'll have it. <laughs> yes, the trouble is, the top of the nail is too small. You couldn't dry that nail if I stuck it in between my teeth and let you hit me on the back of the head. <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. Now, just hold it in place. This time, I'll keep my eyes open. Good. I think one of us ought to know what's going on. <laughs> you ready now? Yeah. Here it goes. Idiot, why don't you watch what you're doing? Abner Peabody, I didn't even touch that hand. I know you didn't. You got the one I had in my pocket. <laughs> can you remember the day you bought your first automobile? I can remember driving mine home, for I had my friend Mel Blank with me. Mel and I still work together, and I still have the Maxwell.
Isn't that amazing? Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voice characterizations. And speaking of characters, there's still another graduate of radio around today. And I do mean around, around every Army, Navy, and Air Force base in the world. The old ski knows himself, Bob Hope. Thank you. Well, here we are at the Pasadena Army Service Forces Regional Hospital. That's an ambulatory phrase, meaning don't step out the back door, Joe. It's a hundred-foot drop to the sewer. <laughs> and this is a wonderful spot for a hospital. When a battle fatigue case comes in, and they can't calm him down and make him sleepy the usual way, they just give him a pass to go into Pasadena. This hospital used to be a hotel called the Vista Del Arroyo. That's a Spanish term meaning why sergeant. The young lady was just admiring my cast, and we got so engrossed, we must have strolled into Hollywood without knowing it. <laughs> Back around 1948, television was beginning to gain in stature. The stars were still the property of radio, but it was obvious a change was in the wind. Fred Allen was already making plans and he revealed those plans on his show one evening when a gate crasher joined him for a sequence that requires all of your imagination. Who would be low enough to sneak into a tour to save 60 cents? There's the guy! Hey, you! Who, me? Jack, how can you be so cheap? All right, go ahead. Be like the other radio comedian. Tell some cheap joke. I won't even eat in the sun. My shadow might ask me for a bite. <laughs> your shadow has teeth? <laughs> get excited. Look, if you're cheap, you're cheap. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> well, Jack, if there ever was a time that you and I should not argue, this is the time. What do you mean, this is the time? Well, a lot of, haven't you heard, a lot of the radio programs that have been on for many years have been canceled. By the way, you, uh, you finished tonight, didn't you? <laughs> Yes, sir. Tonight was my last show of the season. Did your sponsor mention anything about your program coming uh, back in October? Well, no, no, Fred, but we have a mutual understanding. You see, we always sort of take it for granted. Oh. The season ends, the sponsor shakes hands with me, and then we... Yipe! <laughs> Jack. Jack, what's, what's wrong? Tonight he didn't shake hands. <laughs> Cheer up, Jack. When you're retired, you can tune in on my new show. New show? Uh, people don't want entertainment today. A radio show has to give away things. Nylons, ice boxes, automobiles. You mean to stay on the air, you have to give things away? Yes. <laughs> I'll die first. <laughs> well, not me. I'm auditioning my new program tonight. And you're, Fred, you're giving things away? Tons of stuff. Well, Fred... As long as I'm here in the studio... Well, no, I'm sorry, Jack. Professional... <laughs> Professional people cannot participate. It's a rule. But uh, don't you ever find people on these programs changing their names to, to get something for nothing? Well, occasionally we do catch a phony, but we're on the air. What can we do? Hmm. Now, Mr. Allen, we're ready for your audition. I'll run along, Fred. So long. So long, Jack. Hmm. Giving away things for nothing. Well, all right, let's try out my new show. Here he is, the man who will change one of you nobodies into King for a day, the old kingmaker himself, Red Allen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And here is our first eager contestant. Your name, sir? Myron Proudfoot. <laughs> Myron Proudfoot? You look like a chap I know. I'm not interested in your friend. Start giving things away, brother. <laughs> What is your occupation, Mr. Proudfoot? I'm a chaplain in a bakery. <laughs> what does a chaplain do in a bakery? I put wings on angel cake. <laughs> How long have you been in the cake business, Mr. Proudfoot? Long enough to know a crumb when I see one. <laughs> when I see one. <laughs> now, don't get sarcastic, Mr. Proudleg. The name is Proudfoot, and make with the question. All right. Who is the sixth president of the United States? John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams is correct. And Mr. Myron Proudfoot is king for a day. Well, Your Majesty, how do you feel? Never mind how I feel. What do I get? Immediately after this program, Your Majesty will be guest of honor at a banquet at Hamburger Heaven. 
<laughs> Tomorrow morning, through the courtesy of the sanitation department, you will be guest conductor on the 11-5 garbage run through the Bronx. <laughs> At night, in your arm and robe, you will be whisked by bicycle to Orange, New Jersey, where you will be the judge in a chicken cleaning contest. <laughs> I'm king for a day! Not all. Therefore? Yes, we are going to start right now to make you look like a king. Your suit is a little baggy, king. Boys, take his majesty's coat off. Wait, wait. On our stage, we have a Hoffman pressing machine. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. An expert operating the Hoffman pressing machine will press your trousers. Now, wait a minute. For 15 years, I've been waiting to catch you like Alan, this. Alan, you haven't seen the end of me. It won't be long now. I want my 